What's up everyone? Welcome to part two of our pandas tutorial series. And in this one, we're going to look at how to read from a CSV file to create our data frame and also how to take a data frame and write it to a CSV file. So CSV is a pretty common file format that you'll be dealing with. So it's good to know how to work with it and how to create your data frames. And pandas has a super easy and useful method called read CSV, which not only works on CSV files, but a ton of other file formats. So Let's get started. So what you see here is the pandas documentation for the read CSV method. So this is going to be a core method that we're going to be using to create data frames from files. While the name says read CSV, it can be used for other file formats like text or tab separated files and probably a bunch more but by default it's set up to work with CSV files. And as you can see, there's a ton of arguments that you can specify, but by default it's pretty much set up for CSV files. So for the most part, we're gonna leave all of these as default. But the main thing that we're just gonna specify is the file format and some things specifying which column is the index column. And then later we'll specify D types and things like that. But as you can see, it's pretty versatile. It's extremely powerful and optimized, so you can read really fast. And yeah, so with that being said, now what we need is to get some data to work with. So where I came to was this UN data website, and this site has a ton of random data that you can download, but the one I chose was this greenhouse gas inventory. So I came to this CO2 emissions by country. So if I click on it just to get a preview of it, you can see for each country, there's one data point per year, and the value is CO2 in tons. And then there's a bunch of countries, like here's Australia, and there's Austria. So yeah, this is just a sample data set to work with. Feel free to download other ones and use them, but for this example, I'll post the CSV file to my GitHub so you can follow along there. So now let's jump over to a new notebook and get started. Like always, we begin with our import. So first we're going to import pandas as pd, and then we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So the way read CSV works is it's going to return a data frame. So you can see here, um, read CSV file into data frame. So like I said, it's going to return a data frame. So the way we do is we'll say df is equal to pd.readcsv. And then since we have a CSV file, all we really need to do is specify the location of it. So since I've placed the I've placed the CSV file in my current directory, it's this UN CO2 emissions CSV file, what I can do is just call the file name itself. So I can just do this and the file imports and it's now I have this df object. So if I were to call df.head, you can see here that we've got our index column, which it adds by default. We've got the year and then we've got a bunch of columns for the different countries. So you can see we go from Australia all the way to the United States. And these values here again is CO2 emissions in kilotons. So this is just the head, but if we go to the tail, you can see we're going from 1990 all the way to 2014. So each year is one data point. So now that we have the data in our data frame, we can do some manipulation to filter and explore the data a little bit. So for example, if I just want the Australia data, Australia, we can you know put brackets and put the country in strings or as a string, and then we return this series data. So what we get is the series index and the value. And you can see that it provides the column name and the D type. So by default, pandas, when it does this read CSV, it's converting these numbers into floats. Cool, so we can also do plot and then plt.show. And you can see we get a little plot which shows the CO2 emissions over time. 
But one thing you'll notice is that this axis is just an index. So it just goes from zero to the number of points we have. But we really have time series data. So what we'd want is the year and then the value instead of just this index. So the way we would specify that or the way we can get the year as the index instead of just that default index, we can call it when we create the data frame. So you'll see that the read CSV method has a argument called, where is it? Where is it? Index column. So we just specify which column we want to be the index and it'll use that one to create the index. So for example, if we want index call, we want it to be year. Now, when we run this, you can see here, we have the year specified. And just to, just to show you what it looks like, let's do df.head. So now instead of that default index column, we have the year as the index. And you can tell because the year is like sunk down a little bit and then the other columns are raised up. So that indicates this is our, this is our index column. So again, this is great for time series data where we can just call it by default and we can specify our index. And you can see that if I were to, let me just print this out again. You can see now, instead of getting that index, we get the year as our index. Pandas also has some cool statistics built right in. So for example, if we have a data frame, we can just do this, this one tool called describe. And you can see here we get the number of points, which is the count. We get the average value, the standard deviation, the mean, the quartile, the you know 50%, 75, and then the max value for each of the columns. So we've got some statistics built in. We can also do things like max, and we get the maximum value for each column. We can also do min. We can probably do STD and also mean and get all those things individually for each country or column. So lots of cool statistics built right in. And also let's say, for example, we want the, we want the value for 1990 for every country. So what we can do is use a function called loc. So what that does is we pass in its index base. So because we specified the year as the index, we can pass something like 1990. Yeah, so we can pass something like 1990 and you can see that it's passing the whole it's passing all the values for 1990. So loc is index based. So if your index is not a normal index, like from zero to whatever, and it's instead a time, you can specify a time. But there's also iloc, which is purely like raw index based. So if we want the first row or the zero row, we can call zero. Um, you know, we can get the second or third row or whatever. Yeah, so this iloc and loc are used for getting rows out of your table. So we'll, we'll talk more about it in later videos, but just wanted to show it here. So, and then another thing I wanted to show is, like we've already seen, if we say call Australia, we can call it with this notation where we use brackets and then put the column title as a string and it returns a series. Well, we can also use another notation, which is the dot notation. So we can just say df dot Australia, and we get the same thing back. So these are just a few um, statistics and ways of manipulating our data once we have it in the data frame. And let's say now we've taken the data frame and we've done those statistics and we have a new like filtered data frame. Now we want to do is save it to a CSV file. So the way we can do that is there's a function called to CSV. And basically all you do is you take your data frame dot to CSV and we specify the path. So I'm just going to use our, our data frame we have here and let's come down to a new cell 
and we'll just do df to CSV. And I'm just going to specify the name of it and it's going to save it to our current working directory. So we'll just call it new df.csv. So I'll run that and you can see here that now we've saved our new CSV file to our current working directory. So it's as simple as that to take your CSV file, read from it and create your data frame, do your manipulations, your analysis, whatever you need to do, and then save it back to your CSV file. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll provide the, um, the CSV file on my GitHub and I'll also comment this uh, Jupyter Notebook up a little bit to use as a guide so you can follow along. And in the next one, we'll, we'll start talking more about some of the ways you can analyze your data and play with the data a bit more. Um, we'll talk more about the D types and also the date time format for our index. So stay tuned for the next one. If you liked the video, leave it a like. And if you really liked it, then hit the subscribe button. Thanks guys. See ya.